Hey guys, it's Lauren from the Express Lane. And this week we are talking all about self-sabotage at work. Now, sometimes we can really get in our own way at work. And that's super frustrating, especially when we have so many things going on. We have so many tasks already on our plate. So we are counting down the top five ways that you might be sabotaging yourself at work and how to stop doing that. Let's go ahead and hop in. Kicking off our countdown at number five is assumed constraints. Now we have all heard the saying about assuming things and that can be particularly hindering in the workplace. Because if we're basing our actions on what we believe to be true without any actual evidence or if we assume that someone is going to react to one of our actions in a specific way, it can really limit our chances of success. Over the years, there's been a saying that's really stuck with me, especially when it comes to work. And that saying is that you don't get what you don't ask for. So for example, say you found this really great new piece of software, but you assume that it's too expensive. You assume that if you take it to your boss, they're going to say no. But what if instead of assuming that your boss is gonna say no, you take the idea of this new piece of software to your boss anyway? If you bring something to your boss, say a conference that you really want to go to, or this new piece of software that's going to make your job a whole lot easier, the worst your boss can actually say is no. But you know what? Even if your boss does say no, at least this is now on their radar because honestly, they might not have even known that you wanted to go to this conference or they might not have even known that this piece of software existed. At least now that you've brought it up, it's on their radar. And that might actually turn that no from your boss into a not right now, but maybe next quarter or maybe next year, we can talk about it then. Next up on our countdown is number four, which is giving advice too quickly. Now, this self-sabotage is not just for leaders. It really extends to any employee at the company that's maybe a senior level employee, maybe a subject matter expert, anyone whom other people seek out for help or advice in their day-to-day -day job. And I will be the first one to admit that giving advice too quickly is definitely a self-sabotage that I personally struggle with. It's something I've had to work on a lot over the years. And the issue with spoon feeding somebody an answer, just coming to the rescue with the answer right away, is that you're not really giving that person the opportunity to think for themselves. Now, if this employee can instead come up with a few solutions on their own, even if they're not the right decisions, then at least you can start to figure out how they got there, right? How did they get to that conclusion? And once you can figure that out, you can really steer them in the right direction and make it so that they can be more self-sufficient the next time they have a question because they know where to look. Another way you might be sabotaging yourself at work is letting a fear of failure influence your actions. Now, similar to number five on our list, if you're letting fear hold you back at your job, this could be a problem. A fear of failure could keep you from moving into a leadership role. It could keep you from making a big sale. It could even keep you from sharing a breakthrough idea at the next team meeting. But it was Zig Ziglar who said that if you learn from defeat, you haven't really lost. And successful people not only acknowledge that they've failed, they also know that it probably could and likely will happen again. But as long as you can learn something from those past failures and take them to heart, you'll be better prepared to handle failure when it happens in the future. This slides us right into number two on our countdown, which is avoiding taking responsibility. Now, no matter what level you are at at the company and no matter whether you make a mistake that is very big or very small, admitting that we messed up is really hard. And going a step further and acknowledging the mistake, apologizing for it, taking responsibility for it, that can be even harder because in that moment we are trying to hold on to our pride. We're trying to hold on to our reputation. We're just worried what other people are going to think of us. 
So yes, while it takes a great deal of courage to take responsibility for a mistake and apologize for it, it can actually end up having a positive impact on those around us. Because think about it, when we see somebody truly apologize for something, they truly mean it, we look at that person as being honest. We also look at that person as being brave for owning that mistake, owning up to it, taking responsibility for it, and saying, I'm gonna do better next time. And we have made it. Our number one spot on our countdown is stubbornness. Being stubborn can be a huge way that you are sabotaging yourself at work. Now, we have all had that coworker or that manager who has the it's my way or the highway mentality. And those people are never fun to be around, right? Because we know that the second we bring a new idea to them, they're gonna just shoot it down on the spot. So what do we do instead? We either keep those ideas to ourselves or we go around that person to someone who might be a little bit more open-minded to our ideas. And maybe being stubborn in your workplace doesn't look quite that extreme as it's my way or the highway. Maybe instead it looks like being in a team meeting and somebody bringing up an idea and somebody else saying, we've already tried that. Just because you tried something five years ago and it didn't work, doesn't mean that you can't give it another shot now, make a couple tweaks to it and see if it can produce a better result currently. There are a lot of things that have changed in the last couple of years and just because something didn't work five years ago doesn't mean it's not going to work today. Because being willing to see somebody else's point of view and consider their point of view, it's not just an important leadership characteristic, it's also a really important employee characteristic. And the fact is that if we show that we are open to new ideas, whether we implement those ideas or not, it's gonna make it so that other employees feel more comfortable bringing these new ideas to the team. You have worked so hard to get to where you are in your career. So don't let one of these items from our list keep you from moving forward. We hope that some of the items on this list can maybe shed some awareness on ways that you might be self-sabotaging at work and give you a few ideas of how you can change that. Is there another self-sabotaging behavior that you've seen an employee make that didn't make our list? Leave us a comment in box below. We would love to hear from you. And we'll see you back here next week where we bring you even more tips to help you get your career in the express lane.